believe you are? I am the provost. What's your will, good friar? Bound by my charity and my best order, I come to visit the afflicted spirits in prison. But do me the common right to let me see them, and to make me know the nature of their crimes, that I may minister to them accordingly. I would do more than that if more were needful. Look, here comes one, a gentlewoman of mine, who fallen in the flaws of her own youth and blistered her report. She is with child, and he that got it sentenced. A young man more fit to do another such offense than died for this. When must he die? As I do think tomorrow. I have provided for you. Stay a while and you shall be conducted. Repent you, fair one, of the sin you carry. I do, and bear the shame most patiently. I'll teach you how you shall arraign your conscience and try your penitence if it be sound or hollowly put on. I'll gladly learn. Love you the man that wronged you? Yes, as I love the woman that wronged him. So then it seems your most offenseful act was mutually committed. Mutually? Then was your sin of heavier kind than his. I do confess it and repent it, Father. Tis been so, daughter. But lest you do repent, as that the sin hath brought you to this shame, which sorrow is always toward ourselves, not heaven, showing that we would not spare heaven as we love it, but as we stand in fear. I do, I do repent me as it is an evil act take the shame with joy. There rest. Your partner, as I hear, must die tomorrow, and I am going with instruction to him. Grace be with you. Benedicite. Must die tomorrow. Oh, injurious love, that respites me a life whose very comfort is still a dying horror. Tis pity of him. When I would pray and think, I think and pray to several subjects. Heaven hath my empty words. Whilst my invention, hearing not my tongue, anchors on Isabel. Heaven in my mouth, as if I did but chew his name, and in my heart the strong and swelling evil of my conception. The state whereon I studied is like a good thing being often read, grown seer and tedious. Yea, my gravity wherein, let no man hear me, I take pride. Could I with boot trade for an idle wind that the air beats for vain? Place, O form, how often dost thou with thy case, thy habit, reach all from fools and tie the wiser souls to thy lesser scenes? Blood, thou art blood. That's right, good angel on the devil's horn. Tis not the devil's prince. How now, who's there? One Isabel, a sister, desires access to you. Teach her the way. Oh, heavens, why does my blood thus muster to my heart? make it unable both for itself and dispossess all my other parts of necessary fitness. <laughs> so play the foolish throngs with one who swoons. Come all to help him, and so cut off the air by which he should revive. And even so, the general subject to a well-wished king, quitting their own part, and an obsequious fondness, crowd to his presence where their untaught love must need appear offense. How now, fair maid? I am come to know your pleasure. That you might know it would better please me than to demand what is. Your brother cannot live. Even so, heaven keep your honor. Yet may he live, and it may be as long as you or I. Yet he must die. <laughs> Under your sentence? Yea. When? I beseech you that in his reprieve, longer or shorter, he may be so fitted that his soul sicken not. Fie, these filthy vices! It were as good to pardon a man who hath from nature stolen, a man already made, than to remit their saucy sweetness that do coin heaven's image and stamps that are forbidden. Tis all as easy falsely 
To take away a life true made is to put metal in restrained means to make a false one. To set down so in heaven, but not in earth. Say you so. Then I pose you quickly. Which had you robbed? That the now just law took your brother's life, or to redeem him, you give up your body to such sweet uncleanness as she that he had stained. Sir, believe this, I had rather give my body than my soul. I talk not of your soul. No. I compelled sin stand more for number than for a count. How say you? Nay, I'll not warrant that, for I can speak against the thing I say. Answer to this. I, now the voice of the recorded law, pronounce a sentence on your brother's life. Might there not be a charity in sin to save this brother's life? <laughs> Please you to do it, I'll take it as a peril to, to my soul. Tis no sin at all, but charity. Please you to do it at peril of your soul, or equal poise of sin and charity. But I do beg his life, if it be sin, heaven let me bear it. You granting of my suit, if that be sin, I'll make it my mourn prayer to have it added to the faults of mine and nothing of your answer. Nay, but hear me. Your sense pursues not mine. You're either ignorant or appear so craftily, and that's not good. Let me be ignorant and in nothing good, but graciously to know I am no better. Thus does wisdom wish to appear most bright when it doth tax itself, as these black masks proclaim an enshielded beauty ten times louder than beauty could display. But mark me, to be received plain, I'll speak more gross. Your brother is to die. So. And his defense is so? As it appears, account to the law upon that pain. True. Admit no other way to save his life, as I subscribe not that, nor any other, but in loss of question, that you, his sister, finding yourself desired of some such person whose credit with the judge or own great place, could take your brother from the all-binding manacles of the law and that there were no other earthly way to save him, but that you must lay down the treasures of your body to this supposing, or else to let him suffer. What would you do? As much for my poor brother as myself. That is, the impression of keen whips I wear as rubies, and strip myself to death as to a bed that longing have been sick for, ere I'd yield my body up to shame. Then must your brother die. And twere that cheaper way. Better were a brother die at once than a sister by redeeming him should die forever. Were you not then as cruel as the sentence you have slandered so? Nominee and ransom and free partner of two houses, lawful mercy is nothing kin to foul redemption. You seemed of late to make the law a tyrant, and rather proved the sliding of your brother a merriment than a vice. Oh, pardon me, my lord. It all falls out to have what we would have, we speak not what we mean. I something to excuse the thing I hate for his advantage that I dearly love. We are all frail. As when my brother die, if not a veteran, that only he owe and succeed thy weakness. Hey, women are frail too. Aye, as the glasses where they view themselves, which was easily broke as they make forms. Women, help heaven. Men their creation are profiting by them. Nay, call us ten times frail, for we are as soft as our complexions are, and credulous to false prints. <laughs> I think it well, and from this testimony of your sex, since I suppose we are made to be no stronger than faults may shake our frames, let me be bold. I arrest your words. Be that you are, that is, a woman. If you be more, you are none. If you be one, as you are well expressed by all external warrants, Show it now by putting on the destined livery. I have no tongue but one, gentle my lord. I do entreat you to speak the former language. Plainly conceive, I love you. My brother did love Juliet, and you tell me he shall die for it. He shall not, Isabella, if you give me love. I know your virtue has a license, which seems a little fouler than it is to pluck on others. Believe me, on mine honor, my words express my purpose. Little honor to be much believed, and most pernicious purpose. Seeming, seeming. I will proclaim the Angelo look for it. Sign me a present pardon for my brother with an outstretched throat. I will tell the world out loud what man thou art. Who would?
would believe thee, Isabel. My unsoiled name, the austerity of my life, my vouch against you. <laughs> my place of the state will so your accusation away that you will stifle in your own report and smell of calumny. I have begun, and now I give my sensual race the rein. Fit thy consent to my sharp appetite. Lay by all nicety and prolixious blushes which banish what they sue for. Redeem thy brother by yielding up thy body to my will. Or else he must not only die the death, but thy unkindness shall his death draw out to lingering sufferance. Answer me by tomorrow, or by the affection that now guides me most, I shall prove a tyrant to him. As for you, say what you can. My faults, always your true. To whom should I complain? Did I tell this? Who would believe me? Oh, perilous mouths that hold within them one in the self-same tongue, either of condemnation or of proof. But in law make curtsy to their will, looking both right and wrong to the appetite to follow as it draws. How's my brother? Though he hath fallen by the prompture of the blood, yet hath he in him such a mind of honor that at he twenty heads to dead or down upon twenty bloody blocks, he yield them up before his sister's body should stoop to such abhorred pollution. Then Isabel, live chaste. And brother, die for more than our brother is our chastity. I'll tell him yet of Angelo's request and fit his mind to death for his soul's rest. 